Good evening and welcome to the news of Al Shuruq TV. Today's stories include The government of Sudan has welcomed the move to extradite Mr. Ali Kosheb to the International Criminal Court. The negotiations of the security agreement file continues. Egypt, Ethiopia and Sudan agree to accelerate the meeting ahead of the GERD filling. The government of Sudan has welcomed the move to extradite Mr. Ali Kosheb to the International Criminal Court and confirmed its previously stated position that it is ready to discuss the matter of the appearance of the remaining suspects wanted by the International Criminal Court as part of Sudan's authorities' pursuit of justice for the victims of the war in Darfur as a necessary condition for peace. The International Criminal Court, the ICC, has confirmed that one of the first Darfur war criminals, suspects, was in their custody after days of intensive rumors. The ICC revealed that Mr. Ali Kosheb, who is described as one of the leaders of the notorious militia, which operated in Darfur, surrendered voluntarily in the Central African Republic, the CAR. The delegation for the transitional government and the Darfur Track Security Agreement held a negotiation session today through a video conference at the Salam Rutan Hotel in Khartoum and the Crown Hotel in Juba in the presence of the Minister of Defense, Major General Yassin Ibrahim Yassin, and the delegation of the South Sudan Mediation Committee, held by its member, Mr. Diu Motok. During an address by the defense minister to the session, he expressed the government's gratitude and appreciations for the efforts of South Sudan's government led by the President Silva Kerr and the mediation held by his advisor of security affairs, Mr. Tut Gulwak, for the success of the peace negotiation and praised the efforts made by the armed struggle movement to reach an agreement leading to a comprehensive peace. On his part, the head of the mediation delegation, Mr. Dio Matok, expressed his hope that the efforts of the Ministry of Defense will achieve peace, wishing him success in his duties as Minister of Defense. The Minister of Defense, Major General Yassin Ibrahim Yassin, has praised the progress made in the file of the security agreement with the leaders of the armed struggle movement. In the framework of his periodic meetings to get acquainted with the peace files, the defense minister at the Republican Palace with the government's negotiating delegation for the security agreement. He commanded the mediation effort made by the state of South Sudan and its chairman, the Senate General Silvike Meyer Dead, and the chairman of the mediation committee, his advisor for security affairs, Mr. Tut Golwak, and the deputy, Dr. Dio Matok, the committee members and the government and the people of South Sudan. He also greeted the leaders of the armed struggle movement for their efforts, understanding, and insistence for reaching comprehensive peace. Egypt, Ethiopia, and Sudan have agreed to hold daily teleconference meetings until next week to settle the outstanding issues about filling the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. In a statement released in Khartoum after a virtual meeting, the Sudanese Irrigation Minister, Mr. Yasser Abbas, said that the three parties discussed two items, how to pursue urgent negotiations and the determination of the main outstanding issues for each country separately. Besides the three parties, the meeting was attended by delegates from the European Union, the US and South Africa. The member of the Committee for Removal and Empowerment, Combat Corruption and Recovery of Looted Funds has affirmed that the committee is continuing to perform its work and tasks until all the looted funds by the defunct regime are recovered. 
we will not spare anyone who looted the people's money, he said. He added during the press conference of the Empowerment Committee in the Republican Palace this evening that the committee's work in the public service is not retaliation and all the information were obtained through the personal files and reports of the committees formed for this purpose. Noting that the committee's work is in full coordination and harmony amongst its members and the resistance and the revolutionary committees. He stressed that every action of the committee is governed by the law of dismantle and the law in force in the country. The members of the hired committee for the dismantling of the June 31st regime, Dr. Salah Menna, announced that the committee has seized the has seized the Sudan Fund Corporation, in which the leader of the defunct regime, Mr. Osama Abdullah and Mr. Kamal Abdullatif, work. He explained in a press conference held by the committee that the organization runs conferences and meetings for the remnants of the counter-revolution, noting the decision concerning the corporations in the near future. He referred to the special account that the ousted president used in currency, which he himself admitted in a trial season, asking how a head of a state can work in currency trading and contribute to raising the price of the dollar against the Sudanese pound and increase fluctuation. The deputy chairman of the Empowerment Committee, Mr. Mohammed al faki Suleiman, has announced the filing of new criminal suits against the toppled president on wasting the public's funds for his personal interest, revealing that the committee funds a special account in his name at the Omdurman National Bank, in which $20 million were deposited illegally. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs has asserted that the efforts are underway to return the Sudanese standard abroad. The ministry indicated in a press statement that the procedures and measures for the return of all the Sudanese people to the homeland are continuing without incurring the cost of the quarantine. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs pointed in a statement that it would like to show that the number of Sydney citizens stranded abroad have submitted proposals and requests on their willingness to bear the cost of the quarantine at home upon their return. The ministry added that in appreciation of the condition that those stranded are still facing as a result of the precautionary measures for combating the corona pandemic, including the closure of airspace and crossings, that the ministry has submitted all requests and proposal to the higher committee for health and emergency, which has previously agreed in principle to register the names of those wishing to bear the cost of the quarantine. There has been 185 new cases of COVID-19, 17 deaths and 68 recoveries. This is only within the 10 states, while others have reported zero cases. According to an update from the Federal Ministry of Health, as the general cases of COVID-19 in Sudan states have reached 6,427, the recoveries have reached 2,127, and there had been 384 deaths. The FMOH has requested citizens to consider health prevention measures so as to help eradicate coronavirus in Sudan. Reminding headlines. The government of Sudan has welcomed the move to extradite Mr. Ali Kosheb to the International Criminal Court. The negotiation on the security agreement files continue. Egypt, Ethiopia and Sudan have agreed to accelerate the meetings ahead of the GERD filling. That was it from Al-Shuruq TV. See you next time.